G'day and welcome to Mr. Craftsmith. This is Darren and this is a super quick video because I've had a few people reach out to me in relation to the uh, photo um, engraving on slate tiles where I talk about testing your laser to understand its dynamic range. So this is a quick video just to show you how you can actually create your very own grayscale. And it can be in any editing program and uh, it's, it's more about the understanding the values that we're going to be pushing through through. So let's jump straight on in. Okay, so before we jump into Photoshop, I just want to take you through um, understanding the grayscale a little bit more so that uh, if you if you understand it, that means you'll be able to produce it. And, and you can do this across any, any editing software that uh, you might be able to get your hands on, whether it be Photoshop or GIMP or any of those. Um, Coral paint, I guess, would be the same thing. Anything where you can denote um, color values, you can do this. So if we look here, we've got the color, color of the grayscale starting from our black and the grayscale value of zero. And that it is decreasing in intensity by 10% or the brightness. We're increasing the brightness by 10% at each stage. And it's got the corresponding grayscale value. So at this second step here, the grayscale value is 26, 51, 77, 102, et cetera, et cetera, all the way through the scale to it's actually white, which is giving us our 255 value. So that's that range that we talk about, zero to 255. And we have the corresponding brightness values. So that's, that's one particular way that you can make the adjustments. I've also included here the hex values. So if you you don't have access to a brightness scale or uh, any of those sorts of things, you can use these hex values to create the grayscale as well. If you want, to, want a copy of this uh, spreadsheet, just uh, hit me up in the comments and I will get you guys a link. Okay, so let's jump into Photoshop and have a look how we can actually do this. So here we are in Photoshop. I'm just going to create a new file and it doesn't really matter what uh, size this is, but I'm setting it at a resolution of 254 pixels per inch, which is what I'm testing or printing or engraving using my diode printer, which is the Autour Laser Master 3. So here we have a grid. Now, in order to see the squares a little bit easier, I'm just going to pop another color on here, uh, an adjustment layer temporarily, which will just be a solid color. And I'm going to pick a nice blue there so that way we can see exactly what's going on. So the first thing I'm going to do to create this um, grid is I'm just going to select my rectangle tool. And from there, I'm just going to make a, a rectangle, basically. Pretty simple, really, isn't it? Now, um, depending on how many intervals that you want to um, include in your grayscale, you can just, all you just need to do is just duplicate this uh, rectangle as many times as you need to, to create your own scale. So in this instance, so depending on the, let, let's assume this was like a slate coaster, like, I, like the one I did in the example, then I might want to create a, a row of, um, you know, three rows with four samples in each, so as I can see, or four, three or four, five, whatever, whatever the case may be. So let's run through how we can do that. There's a couple of ways that you can do that in Photoshop. Um, this is really not a Photoshop tu tutorial, so I'm just going to run through it really quickly. But if I hold down my Alt key, you can see that extra arrow pop up, the extra arrow behind the uh, white arrow. So if I then just click and drag, it's actually just duplicating that one. And uh, I can do that as many times as I want to make my squares. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to um, select all of those and just over my layers panel here, let me just make a little bit more room for that one. So I'm just selecting those four and I'm just holding down my Alt again and I can replicate them that way. And if depending on how many grids that you're wanting to do that you can you can just keep going and create as many squares as you need to. But just for the purpose of the example, I'm just going to do eight just to make it a little bit quicker. So now that we've got those there, you can align them however you want. But this is really just to show you how you can create your own grid. So I'm just going to select on the first one here. And over in the properties panel here, I'll just drink, bring this down again so we can see that one. We can see the appearance and we've got the fill color. So if I click on that once, I can then bring up the uh, palette picker over here or the color picker. 
I'll just click on that one again. And this is going to be our first one. So the brightness is going to be 100%. Let's get rid of that one. So we want that one as zero. And we want that one as zero as well. So you can see the RGB values here at 100% brightness is 255, 255, 255. Here's our hex value, which is FFF, FFF. And if we refer back to our scale here, we can see that that corresponds to those values in this table. Okay, so we've picked our white one. So now that's turned white. I'm just selecting the next one and going into the fill. And then let's just get rid of these again, zero, zero. Um, and our zero, our brightness is going to be um, 90, sorry. Okay, so again, 229, 229, 229 for the RGB, E5, E5, E5 for the hex value. And we check our table, that's exactly the corresponding values there. Okay, so, and we just follow that process. So it's just sl slowly getting um, darker and darker at each stage. And I should have set this up a little bit smarter to start with, shouldn't I? And 80% all the way through where we would then go through to, you know, this might be our black value and I'll just go in and, and do that one for you. So again, it's zero, zero and zero. And you can see that creates our black color and RGB values of zero, zero and zero. And our hex value is also triple zero, triple zero. And that is the basis of creating the grid pattern. Once you've created the grid as, as you would like it, so what I'm going to do is just go down to my layers panel, just drag it up so we can see it, and I can get rid of that color there. And I, if I want that on a transparent background, I'm just turning that layer off. And then all I would then do is, um, in this case, I'm just going to export that as a PNG, so it gives me the transparency, and save that wherever that you would like to save that, and away you go. So that's the basis of how you create that grayscale. Like I said, if you would like a copy of that spreadsheet with those relevant values in there, hopefully that's given you a better understanding. But um, if you would like a copy of that, pop, your, pop a comment down below and I'll make sure that I get that link through to you for that file. In the meantime, we, um, as I keep saying, uh, be creative and stay grateful. Until next time, bye for now.